So, last we left off, uh, you guys were dealing with the devils that had broken into this masquerade ball. Um, the, uh, the Rakshasa you had encountered before, uh, Dalkul, uh, had apparently called in some favors within the hell, um, bringing along with him, uh, in Ernie's and a couple of imps to kind of just harass people. Uh, you guys were able to deal with the imps and the Aranians, but the Rakshasa seems to have disappeared. Um, meanwhile, um, a few people were able to assist in the fight, including uh, your friend Varhasa, uh, Aldrich's partner Thalia, um, the Soul Caller, and Demir's baby brother. Um, not that she's trying to avoid the situation at all by flying out of the the room at top speed. Um, so Demir, where do you go? She is just booking it. Um, honestly, <clears throat> I think she might be just kind of booking it in the vague direction of the inn, but not really like with any uh in like any real like path forward. She's just like literally just flying and um she'll like move down to fly closer to the um rooftops. Um so if her spell drops she's not just falling like ninety feet to her death. All right. And what's the duration of uh, Otherworldly Guys? Can you remind me? It is a minute. And I think I got, like, I think it was three rounds gone, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you can get pretty far, and then eventually the spell drops. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, why don't you roll a d20 to see if you land on a roof or on the ground. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's an eight. Okay. Um, you find yourself on a, on a roof. Okay. Yeah. Um, no clear it's... means of getting down right now, <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, D Demir lands on the roof and um, is just going to kind of sit down there for a hot second and hyperventilate into her knees. Okay. What is going through her mind right now? Uh, just stupid, 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 stupid. Like, of course he was going to be here. Like, why wouldn't he be here of course like of course my parents wouldn't have given up on Saya. like the fucking crown princess is about his age why the fuck wouldn't they send him here i am so stupid like why did i have to go and make this more difficult for myself and it's just kind of a loop of that and it's not just Demir's voice it is the voice of many different memories <laughs> coming through um just telling her what a stupid ass mistake she's made and um replaying like how the dancers had started to her surround her and seeing Lish go down and just all of that good shit and she's having a panic attack <laughs> okay um how long do you think you stay up there on the roof um long enough for the like panic to start to fade and her breathing to start to kind of normalize a little so like i don't know five minutes or so and, like, 
when she starts to calm down, the thought begins to like creep in of, oh shit, (laughs) I left my friend behind and I don't know what is happening over there or what they are being told or anything like that. And she is going to cast Feverfall on herself to get down from the roof because I forget that I have that ability. (laughs) And kind of try to orient herself where she is in the city. All right. Um, I'll tell you what, roll an intelligence check. Okay, she's not doing great at that, but um, that's actually a 17. Um, you are, uh, it, I mean, it's not too hard to orient yourself based on the presence of the Colossus in the middle of the city. Um, but you are few blocks away uh, from the inn you guys were staying at, um, back in in the the bobble sector. Um, uh, you're close to to some shops that at this point in the evening are not open, um, but uh, you you know where you are and how far you flew. Um, I think Demir's going to make her way to the inn, actually. Okay. And she's going mm-hmm. to go up to the room if she had a key. I don't know if she did. We'll say you did. Okay, yeah. Um, and she's actually starts packing her stuff away. Okay. Um, it is while you start packing that you receive a message in your mind um, that I will send you now. Um, All right. So for those of you uh, that remained behind and didn't just nope your way out of there, um, uh, As I mentioned, uh, palace-sanctioned clerics were coming in um, and helping to get all of the nobles and people standing up with the assistance of the Soul Caller and Valkyria, if you want. Yeah. uh, Since literally what I was about to do before Lish went uh, was making her way to the Crown Princess to... Uh, revivify, uh, revivify her first to secure the uh, chain of succession and then I had seven additional revivifies on top of that and then a combination of spare the dying and some low level healing spells and so I would get as many people up as possible and then I would track uh, track down whatever is the highest ranking guard present all right Uh, Highest ranking guard is uh, in the process of kind of getting the princess out of the room. Fair enough. Uh, Before he dips, Valk would go, uh, I would recommend updating your security protocols in regards to demons and extraplanar entities. Uh, she nods, makes mental note of that, and continues to kind of, like, remove Princess from the situation. Fair. Valk salutes and goes back to helping best she can right. with the healing stuff. Uh, everyone, for the most part, seems, like, confused and disoriented. And, you know, like, most of them are not quite sure what happened. Um... You can see uh, a few of the workers of the the palace 
including those that were serving drinks and cleaning. Um, a few of them are just fucking quitting. <laughs> they're like, nope, we're yeah, not, they're, not dealing with this shit anymore. <laughs> they're not used to Good dealing with. Please, I'm done. <laughs> You know, they they don't live the adventurer's life. They're not used to being revivified at least yeah. once a month. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's sort of what, what's going on right now. Um, it, uh, Itri is chatting with uh, the the pattern dancer in Marhavi. Uh... The pattern dancer, is that the one that Tobias, I know we went over this last, at the end of the last session, but we can also do it now, is, um, is that the, uh, woman, or the pattern, yeah, the woman who, uh, gave Tobias her bow? Yes, there are three of them. Okay, uh, Tobias will walk up to the one, um, that gave him the bow, uh, He'll have, like, pulled his mask back, so it's just kind of, like, hanging, like, almost like a hood, uh, behind him and stuff. So it's like, you know, start a battle or whatever after the lady flew up into the air just so he has better sight, um, so she can, and if we can see his face, um, and, like, as he walks up to her, uh, he, like, has taken the edge of his cloak and, like, tried to wipe away some of the blood, but because it's, you know, wood, you it needs to be washed rather than wiped, and he'll um, he'll hold the uh, the bow and whatever arrows remain, um, and whatever he scavenged up out to her and say, "Thank you for letting me borrow this." Uh, normally, I'm I'm not one to return things in such a um, less than ideal state but i imagine uh you would want this back now rather than later so i apologize for the blood on it i do appreciate it it is uh, important to make sure that we are armed in in case that they come back It's a good mentality to have. You never, unfortunately, you never know in these times. Wish it wasn't that way, but any kind of just shrugs. What can you do? She kind of like returns the gesture, like, yeah. I mean, wasn't really expecting to have to deal with this this evening, but here we are. <laughs> Are none of you hurt? Or at least not hurt too badly? Um, it's the uh, Itri who, who speaks up and, and says, um, we have some healing potions back where we are, are staying. Um, Thank you all again for your assistance with whatever this was. Lish kind of reaches his hand out to kind of shake with each other and says, I didn't quite catch your name. Uh, yes, um, I am uh, Prince Itri Zahid Rajab Anur. Could you put that name in the chat for <laughs> yes, me? I can. So I can. Thank you. Also, that is not my fault, by the way. <laughs> what a mouthful of marbles. <laughs> I can't imagine who's responsible for that one. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I already put his full name in the encountered NPCs. He's the one at the very bottom. Uh... Um, Lish, Lish will shake his hand and the smile that he's got on his face kind of crooks a little wider and uh he tilts his head and he says ah a prince i see 
Um, and he seems to be kind of glancing around um, a bit, both taking in the uh, the mess of the ballroom um, while also apparently looking for someone. Um, and he seems a little disappointed, but uh, he says, um, uh, he, he kind of claps his hand to his breast and gives you a, a short bow and, and says, um, uh, in the, I, I apologize, but I did not catch your name. You can call me Lish. In My then, friend here. He kind of gestures towards Toby. For Toby to introduce himself. Uh, my name is Tobias. I also wanted to thank you for your assistance during the fight. Uh, I also feel it's necessary to mention that the summoning you did was very cool. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it was very cool. Uh, that was a gin. Um, it is a... Uh, uh, more powerful uh, genie from the uh, elemental plane of air. As Valk walks by with some panicking noble that she just revivified, uh, you should join us for a thank you drink for helping us with the situation. And then just keeps going. Uh, I don't when... know how that woman can believe we want to drink after a fight like that. <laughs> I think referring to, to Itri, yes. Well, mm -hmm. um, Itri says, um, well, I have a location that I was staying in uh, for the sake of the party. Um, within the diamond sector itself, uh, where all of the drinks are already tested for things such as poison. Um, if you are willing. That seems very clever of them. Well, gives a what thumbs up it? and continues hurting the panicking noble. I mean, it makes the most sense. If what they're too careful, it makes sense <laughs> if they're hosting a prince. The last thing they want is a political scandal on their. Well, you mean other than the one that is clearly about to occur, based off of the situation this evening. That is very true. Now would be the best time for a scandal, in fact. Completely over time. Sure that the commoners are going to be gossiping up a storm tomorrow morning. What would be considered the bigger scandal though? Like and Tobias just kind of looks out at like what remains of the ballroom. He's like I mean, after everything that happened here at this point, you would think that anything else that occurs would just be kind of like a footnote. Well, I mean, not to do to my own horn, but I feel like a, a assassination of a foreign prince would also be the, the cherry on top of the evening. Hmm. Yes, you do make a fair point. Are you just in town for the ball? More or less. Uh, I was conducting uh, something of an investigation uh, and the nobles cut wind that I was in the country and invited me and I'm here more, mostly as a political obligation. Oh, what a, what a hardship that must be. <laughs> I understand. I mean, <laughs> I don't mind a good party, but I don't think this one will qualify. <clears throat> Mm 
Um, I wanted to note that Levy has gone over to the window that Demir flew out of, and she does have that mental link with her, because she mentally asked her where the fuck she was going when she when she saw her darting out the fucking window. <laughs> uh, she has been flying through a window. She flew through the door and just oh. out of the palace. Okay, well, she's lingering just outside of the doors trying to keep connection with Demir, make sure she doesn't go too far, but also keep an eye on the party. Um, yippee. Alright. <laughs> party seems to have wound down at this point. I mean, our party. The okay, the party. Yes. <laughs> Not... yes. The Wild Roses. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but she she's hearing Demir's thoughts and just kind of waiting for her to calm the fuck down. She's not calming the fuck down. <laughs> I think I think Hawk would also be uh, helping escort nobles out. He's got his own healy hands now. He's probably putting them to use. And while helping someone on their feet and out, he probably sees Levy and approaches. She'll uh, give him a nod and a wave and and kind of tap her temple and be like, I'm <laughs> trying to keep an eye on the other warlock in the party. <laughs> the main warlock in the party, I should say. Um, I was wondering where she went. She's around. Can say that much. I don't know where though. Um, she, since Demir isn't calming down, she will occasionally ping her with, "It's okay. It's all right. You're not alone." Like <laughs> just gen- gently. <laughs> what is the range on that? Like, it's... can Demir? Hang on. Let me double check. But I think it. Oh lordy, uh, I'm trying to find it in fucking everything. Um, any creature I can see within 140 feet to establish it, and then, um, it just says that as an action, I'm speaking to you, and as an action, you can speak back. Mm-hmm. After that, okay. So. I don't think it super matters where you are beyond that, unless the DM wants to say something about uh, that. What was the the range for the triggering thing? Uh, within 140 feet. Okay. Um. So we'll we'll say that you can have this link for 140 feet, but Demir's a little out of this range at this point. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nah, it's big chilling. Logistics are important. Um, I can find her, but don't you think we should know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but she, I'm a, she's still I imagine I'm the last out. person she wants to see right now. No, just... Uh, yeah, if you want to go tell Lish, I don't think she'd go very far from us hmm. on account of Lish, <laughs> but right. I don't think she's not going to come back or anything. I'm just worried. I would be too. I'll go let him know. So it just goes, you know, over to the grouping around Prince E Tree, probably. He's probably going to take stock of the situation for a sec before he just butts in, though. Alright. I think Lish probably ended up asking the the dancers for the, their names and social security numbers and you know. <laughs> um well I do have names for all of them. Just one second. Um Lish just like Yes. <laughs> Give me your names. <laughs> Hand them over. Um <laughs> 
So you already know Rahat, who is half elvish with uh, dark skin and long red dreadlocks. Um, there's also Inam, um, elvish with dark brown curly hair, kind of tied up in a bun. And, um, and there's uh, Tifat, uh, also el elvish uh, with black braids and sort of like a half ponytail. Mm -hmm. Tobias wants to ask um, Itri you mentioned that you were investigating something roll a persuasion check with advantage hey yeah cause Tobias just sounds genuinely curious and just like this guy helped us maybe we might be able to give help to him let's see uh, do, 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 persuasion and you said with advantage? Yeah. Oh, thank God. That's gonna be a 15. 15. He kind of mm -hmm. pauses and and looks up at you um, and says, uh, Well, um, I am, I have gathered that the I uh, well the the sort of uh rips in the fabric of reality are not confined just to Mahaba. Um and I am trying to figure out just how long this has been going on. Uh Things are well. I shall say, for the sake of security, things are a bit strange at home. Ah, uh, and I was hoping to try to find someone here that may be able to uh, shed some light on on what is going on. Uh, but she seems to have left. Tobias uh, shoots a glance at Lish before um, turning back to Ichi and saying, uh, Sorry, my brain is, like, losing words for some reason. Oh, good. Uh, he looks back to Itri and says, Who is it that you were looking for? We might be able to help. Uh, oh, one of my older sisters. Um, uh, have you encountered uh, anyone that seems to have uh, been more or less displaced in in time. I'm just gonna ask real quick: Is Hawk privy to this conversation because he's waiting nearby? Or sure. isn't he by the door? Is he by the door with Levy, or did he come over? Uh, after checking with Levy, he started looking for you. Hmm. Yeah, so. but we're back towards that, that like backside. Yeah, so he was, I'm just so. I'm just trying to get I'm just trying to get a sense of what he can and can't eavesdrop on. <laughs> I mean, you can roll you a always... perception check if you you're uncertain. That's fair. I'll do that. That's a good idea. <laughs> no modifier, eleven. Okay, you can gather bits and pieces. Okay. I'll probably ask for more information than like a normal person later. Yeah, continue. Sorry. Lish will just kind of hum at that question. Just be like, hmm. What do you know of people who are out of time? N not as much as they would like, preferably. But uh, seven years ago, my sister disappeared. Um, and there seems to have been 
strange magic associated with her disappearance. Um, and I was hoping to glean if her disappearance was involved in some way with the current happening, uh, or ideally if I could find her and I, I uh, managed to locate her briefly, uh, but again, she seemed to have fled the room. I'm sorry, I didn't catch what your sister's name was. That is a part of the magic, unfortunately. Uh, I have to write down her name in order to remember it. How interesting. Well, I don't know, Tobias. Do you think that we could perhaps lend a hand over a drink? Tobias looks to Lish and has it almost like trying to hide like a look of dawning realization. Do I have to roll <laughs> deception for that? Like him trying to mask his Yeah, roll deception check. Okay. <laughs> Toby's gotta put his mask back on. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I thought holy Just shit. So when I rolled the dice um, on D and D Beyond, it like landed, so the number was like upside down, and I and because I'm not wearing my glasses, I thought it was a fucking one, <laughs> but it was a seven, so eight. <laughs> You're not hiding it very well. Uh. Tobias kind of coughs into his hand a little before going, uh, whatever you feel is, is best. Lish, it's at this point that you receive a message that I will mm -hmm. send to you. Um, but, uh, Itri kind of shrugs at this point. You can still see that there's this look of disappointment on his face. Um, hmm. at, at, at this point, uh, that uh, many of the guards seem to be kind of trying to usher you guys out of the room. So that they can yeah. clean up. <laughs> Just as we're standing there, though, like the slight mild like humor and curiosity that Lish kind of had on his face has like dropped off of his face. And he looks at Tobias and says, we need to leave here now. Itri, would you be interested in coming to our home? rather than a bar, a far more secure location, I assure you, than a public space. Um, he kind of considers for a second and glances at the pattern dancers to see what's on their mind. Um, and they don't seem to have any objections uh, uh, based, just based off of their demeanor um, and he says uh, I think it would be best to be removed from this situation so there, there is not a, a further scandal yes and of course your guards are more than welcome to um, let us find the rest of our party members and Lish will turn and quite urgently look for everybody else and pull everybody away from what they are doing. 
Uh, he's he's a little like brusque about it. He's a little snappy. Not gonna lie. I imagine uh, that since we're getting ushered out as well, he probably just sort of scoops everyone in as we leave. Just like uh, come here. Yeah. Lish. Make some our pan gestures. <laughs> uh, Lish finds Balk uh, talking to Thalia and Aldric, also inviting them for drinks since they helped in the combat and Varhasa. Uh, Varhasa says that she appreciates the invitation, but she is going to try to help this political situation from spiraling wild, wildly out of control. Um, Thalia and Aldrich politely declined saying that they are going to be uh, that they need to discuss what just happened with their their former party members. Valk's just like, yeah, makes sense. I wish you best check in uh, tomorrow. Um, as, as, uh, Lich is rounding people up, um, going to realize that Aaron is not in the room. Boy! <laughs> Boy, where'd you go? <laughs> uh, so, uh, anyway, um, Aaron has, you know, an out following, following, you know, one of the, one of the guards is sorting people out. Um, and said, uh, um, it, it, excuse me. You're seeking out one of the guards? Yeah. Um, the guard seems kind of busy, but kind of looks to you and waits. I, I believe that I have important information starting this night's attack. Um, where, where might I go to? I guess to admit it. Your your voice is cutting out a little, Dove. Oh, sorry. Um, he says, I I believe that I have pertinent information regarding this night's attack. Uh, where where might I go to submit it? I can take your statement here. Wonderful, wonderful. Um. And Aaron, know, you know, uh, relay, uh, what do you know, our saucer that, you know, he posed, um, as being royalty and sent out an invitation to Aaron and that Aaron's pretty sure that it was, you know, targeted to us specifically. Um, and, uh, that, you know, the saucer is capable of, uh, changing forms. Um, so who knows what he looks like out there, but Aaron, Pretty sure he shouldn't be going after any more of the nobles. All right. Um, so the guard takes your statement, seems interested in the fact that the Rakshasa does not seem happy to know that it was targeting you guys in particular. Uh, you're banned from the palace. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you are given... Uh, let's see. About 400 gold to keep this quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, he'll, he'll take that, I suppose. All right. <laughs> um, all right. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess we'll, um, Come in, come in a few minutes later after that. All right, you see Lish kind of in a hurry, kind of gathering everyone. <laughs> yeah, Aaron will, Aaron will run over. Are you all right, Aaron? Oh, hi. Yeah, quiet. Um, and he'll look over it, you know, that we have some um and say um just just uh helping out where I can. Um he'll he'll tap his ear um the message list. We'll talk to you later, I suppose. Something urgent has come up. We need to leave immediately. Aaron will Aaron will nod. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, join join the group. Uh, Damir is still notably absent from your group. I think Aaron will send a second message with, like, uh, with Damir. She's gone ahead of us, though. Who of us have message? Will someone message her? Ask her if she's at the end. Or somewhere else. Uh, I used all my spells for. Is, is Lish making an open ask here, or? Yes, he does not uh, remember who has spells. I can't. I can't. I can't message her, but I can find her. Can you? She, I'm probably one of the last people she wants to see, so I'd like to take one of you with me. If it's locate creature, I have locate creature up on Demir at all times. So unless she's within oh, well, a thousand feet of me, it's not going to work, unfortunately. Uh, I got message. What do you need message? Will you ask her, <laughs> ask her where she is? Uh, that's even less range. It's 120 feet. Yeah. The spell you're thinking of is sending, but I used yeah, up those sending. spell slots getting nobles up. And she has to be in sight because I have to point at her. Uh, I don't have sending, though. Aaron, Aaron pipes up. Um, if you think she might have gone back to the room, I be able to uh, detect that. You, buddy, are not going anywhere by yourself for a while. <laughs> no, no, from, from right here. It's worth a shot. I have no idea if it's a work. But I was I was getting weird flashes while while shielding, so um maybe I can well I'll just see. Um and Aaron, you know, his his eyes are glow. Um and Carl steps out of him. Um Oh shit. Yeah. Uh Aaron's got new abilities. Um and Aaron's going to say, um during, during the fight, I think I got lashes of your perspective. And can yeah, you go check our hotel room? Um, and he's gonna he's gonna look questioningly at Arald. Um, and he's going to uh, pull down a oh boy. Oh yeah. All right, so you are sending the ghost of your ancestor to walk through the streets of the city. Um, she disappears there. Um, the, the talking's mostly for flavor here. Okay. Um, yeah, you create an invisible sensor within, um, within I don't know if it's familiar to you. Uh, sensor remains in place for the duration, um, and I can choose to be out of him. I like you a bit familiar. Dove, I have no idea why you're so hard for me to hear today. <laughs> yeah, I think something's up with your mic today. Uh, you're I think yet. I know what you're talking about. I'm going to go grab the yeah. thing from the class sheet and I'll uh, double check to make sure it's the right one I'm thinking of. I'll see if I can. Yeah, Dove, you're just muffled. Um, mm-hmm. I guess I'll and, just... And... Better. I'm glad uh, it's not just me. Yeah. Um, dude, I'm on a I'm on a new uh new device, so ah, that'll do it. 
All right, so I just need to fucking scream. Got it. Okay. Uh, is, is that one that Max just posted the right one? Uh, let me check what Max just posted. Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so Arl steps out of you, listens to your instruction, nods, and then turns invisible and, uh, a few minutes later, um, Demir, uh, you can tell that something has stepped into the room, given that your, uh, your magic eyes are, are always magic always eyes. Active. Um, <laughs> something vaguely humanoid, uh, steps into the room, um, with uh, in Ill illusion aura. I mean, can I tell what it is? <laughs> you can roll a perception check. <laughs> cool. For no reason. <laughs> that's a um. Actually, that's okay. That's a twenty-nine. Or I'm I'm sorry, not a twenty-nine. A nineteen. <laughs> 19. Um, yeah. It doesn't seem like it's going to harm you and, as you know, it only stays there briefly, but then it leaves again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I feel like that would kind of spook her a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, uh, she's uh <laughs> she had um she had packed up her bag and had gotten that message and had kind of frozen solid um like where she was standing uh so when she sees the little like spirit guy step in uh and like just like that kind of spurns her to start moving again um and she is going to try finishing packing up and like putting her uh her bag together and uh start heading towards the door. Um Okay. Yeah. Aaron will Aaron will come out of it. Um you know, his eyes uh, uh stop glowing and go back to, you know pupils instead of just being white. Um, and he's gonna say, oh god, that felt weird. Yeah, uh, she's, she's in the room, um, but I don't think so much longer. Uh, she, she's got her stuff packed and seems like she's in a state. Damn it. And how fast can we move? How fast can I think our best bet is uh, taking a horse from w one of our carriages and hustling that way. Lish will summon owls. Or that. <laughs> That's what I meant. Do you summon them in the courtyard of the, the Luminous Citadel? Uh, I think he waits until we're outside the area. Okay. There's probably not enough room with all the guests and chaos anyways to yeah, no, grow that's them. Not, that's why I was asking. Um, you can uh, move away. There are plenty of courtyards and whatnot within the diamond sector. It's the, clearly where the, the wealthy of uh, the city trod. Um, but you're able to... Uh, to summon the owls. Yeah. So I summon the owls. Is Idri is coming with us, I guess. I'm I mean yeah. <laughs> you yep. invited him. Yep. Well, we've got eight owls, so <laughs> 
At least we have one less Demir, but... He, he is actually pretty interested in the owls. He's excited by this. The, uh... Um, let me just let me do the math really quick because I need to just make sure that we have enough owls for everybody. Um, and I can turn into a giant owl and polymorph someone if we need to. So, give me one second. We got an additional four people. So, uh, if you need to, it'll only take Hawk a little bit to reprepare, uh, find greater steeds. So you can take the Yog back after a delay. Uh, How we long have, does that take? No, we have six party members at the moment. Uh, and four, so that's ten. Uh, two per owl, that's five owls. There's okay. also the pattern okay, dancer. Yes, yeah. four pattern dancers, six party members, ten and people, entry. two per owl. We also have entry. Okay. So. Entry and the pattern dancers is four people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, so we're good. Yeah, we're, we're just good. making sure uh, that the math is there. Yeah, I think it's a point there. And Aaron has hooked back up with us. Yeah, Aaron, mm -hmm. Aaron's back up. He does now. He he received his hush money and stuff, and <laughs> sent fucking his hush. ancestor go spy on your wife. So we're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aaron can ride with the one pattern dancer. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you for that. <laughs> okay, so we all uh, we have a bunch of owls and uh, pop up. Well, Lish has the thousand feet to find uh, Demir as he's flying around. Certainly, but uh, we're gonna head back towards the end, I think. So, um, Levy's probably gone and glued herself to Toby. She's very worried about Demir. All right. Yep. So you guys are able to make it out of the diamond sector without being shot down by ballistas. Um, uh, it's a, just a, a short flight to uh, to the inn. Um, we'll say that you guys land. Do you land in the street or on the rooftop? in the street. Cool. You land in the street right as Demir is exiting the inn with her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you shall not pass. No, I'm just seeing Lish with long blowy hair sitting on the back of the owl, just reaching a hand down. Get on, my love. You know, it's just straight up romance novel bullshit going on. Uh, certainly he's also like white clothes covered in blood so you know that another aspect of the romance novel that we're copying here today so romantic yeah uh so Demir was starting to head down into the street and suddenly owls all around <laughs> and um she like looks uh only as far into the owls as it needs to be to find Lish and just like immediately going to him like <laughs> I just like I we need to go <laughs> now Lish just nods and says I got the same message or at least something similar you you got it as well I think that somebody is trying to make a point. Shit! <laughs> <You're just laughs> dissolving into swearing. So at this point, while you're sitting there swearing next to your husband, that your baby brother <laughs> comes off of his owl. <laughs> um, he casts a spell. <laughs> Sorry, there were people in my house. What did he what did he do? <laughs> he cast a spell um 
on himself. Yeah, Demir, like, sees him hop off of the owl and, like, takes a little bit of a step back and looks to Lish, like, what did you do? Um, by the way, what kind of goes through Demir's mind when she sees Itchy, other than, I'm gonna blame Lish for this. (laughs) (laughs) Um... A little bit of panic, a little bit of, like, cognitive dissonance. Because last time she saw him, he was 11 years old. Um, And now he is 18. And that is really freaky. Uh, And, like, also, like she didn't expect to see him. And, like, she doesn't know what to expect from him and is just kind of frozen for a minute there waiting for him to make a move all right definite recognition though (sighs) yeah well i mean she scried on him so Mm -hmm. uh well that's all itri was looking for when he cast uh, detect thoughts um (laughs) (laughs) and he says um it it really is you what are you doing here mostly looking for you but why what are you doing here what do you want who sent you mom dad mom and Dad aren't doing well. No one sent me. I sent myself, I suppose. Why? I I want to understand what is going on. And also, is it so hard to believe that I missed you? Yes, actually. Did you come all this way looking for me? Of all people, me. Well, yes, you are my sister. I was hoping that you would be able to provide some insights on everything that is going on. You you disappeared, and now mom has disappeared, and Amira is is gone uh, and, uh, uh baba doesn't recognize me everything is in chaos amira is gone she has been on her honeymoon for several years now <laughs> i'm sort of like leaning back in the same way that i am just like <laughs> <laughs> Because he's listening to this and putting the pieces together just like everyone else. Perhaps, and Tobias tries to politely cut in, we should move this conversation to somewhere more secure. If there is potentially more danger, and if the contents of which we're getting into is sensitive, the last thing we want is unwanted eyes to hear it. The, the, the pattern it. dancers kind of cut in at this point and say, I think that would be best if we could have a more private conversation. If we can gather our things, we could travel back to the manor. We could return for our things in the morning, for that matter. I'm we not could. leaving my fucking gear here. All right, all right. I'm going to run up and get some of the gear if some if one or two other people want to come with me and get the rest of it. Yeah, Tobias will run up and uh, help with gathering gear and whatnot. And... Help me in and Hawk also dismounts. 
Not that Levy wants to, like, even take her eyes off of Demir right now because she's worried sick, but it's fine. <laughs> like to like Toby, Hawk is also definitely worried about leaving our gear behind, especially with the Rakshasa on the loose that could very mm -hmm. well sabotage our things while we're away. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So pair up, go to rooms, throw stuff into bed, mm -hmm. Rakshak the sheet, and bail. I don't think we even leave Evan. I don't think we even leave a facade that we might even still be there. It's probably best to just go. Levy will ask Demir if she could have her the bag of folding to just shove shit into. I think it's Lish's Lish, bag. Cool. Shit, Lish, my bad. Lish will give you the bag of holding to dump things into. She's like. Be right back, and she's gonna go to go through all of the rooms with Toby and Hawk that he was coming with. Yeah, Hawk's gonna put on his own pack and probably sling two more in his arms. Well, I'll, I'll go with Hawk to do that room, and uh, Toby and Levy can do the polycule room. Either way, Tobias so going sling on his own pack and have his bow and arrow and arrows and stuff. Um, just in case, but he'll help gather everything else and shove it into the bag of holding. Yeah, anything that flishes in 10 years that's going into the bag of holding. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, basically, yeah, just quick sweep the arms, shit goes in the bag, get her own pack and the staff of the Spire of Conflux and then get back downstairs with Toby. Falk just goes around the room, literally grabbing everything, throws it into the blanket, twirls it, and drops a couple gold pieces on the uh, uh, dresser. Stand for something like that. To okay. cover the blanket. <laughs> Fuck it, we ball. Alright, while they're gathering gear, uh, might be for to ask if anything else happens while we're out with the other group. Lish will just kind of make sure Demir isn't freaking out too hard, I guess. He kind of like wraps an arm around her shoulders. She just kind of uh, like when Lish goes over to her and like wraps her up in his arms, like that is the first time that she breaks eye contact with each tree, um, to look up at him and then looks back at each tree as if like looking away from him for a minute is going to make him make something happen. <laughs> um, and just like, Toolish and Sylvan, like, we shouldn't be bringing him. I think you may know more about the situation you and I were messaged about, in which case more information can't hurt. They can solve it themselves. They're resourceful. Obviously. Very resourceful. Maybe so, but if certain factors are involved, I'm not willing to put you at risk. You may be. What if we stay out of it? I don't know if we have a choice. We have been called out directly, my dear. Who is it? Do you know? And DM, I do know this voice, this person, right? I don't remember the name. You haven't had much of an opportunity to interact with her directly, um, but uh, you do know uh, that uh, 
she tends to kind of fuck with with mortals in a way that you don't mm-hmm. always vibe with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, she's yeah, she's a part of the the group that one group. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just kind of long suffering sigh. <laughs> It is unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Is it? I don't think we should have this conversation here. Let's wait until the rest of them return and we can go someplace more secure. Off the streets where the Rakshasa may be. Demir is just like radiating frustration and anger and it's very cold. <laughs> mm. Itri is kind of just looking at you guys uh, and uh, noticing the way that you're you're hugging <laughs> um, and not saying anything. Um at this point that the pattern dancer as you had not noticed depart uh seems to kind of rise up out of one of the shadows of the street and hands itri a a bag a bag (laughs) what kind of bag go bag probably (laughs) Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's Good. handy. I mean, you guys are getting ready to go. He sent someone to go get his stuff. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, we could always go and pick it up later, but this is makes it easier. All right. I think as they re-enter the street, Hawk will <laughs> suggest to the party, like, does anyone want their bag now? No answer is given. He will just hold on to the one that he's carrying. Yeah. Aaron comes down with just like, he has his rope out and he has just like physically tied random things onto him after his backpack got full. <laughs> he's like, yep, I got, I got books all down my arm, uh, but I think I got as much as I could. <laughs> I think you need a bigger backpack. Aaron, Aaron's gonna nod and laugh a little. So we can fix that some other day. For now, and just like toss back up the backpack, and Hawk goes to remount his owl. Let's get back to the manor. Let's. Um, Lish will cast around looking for a tree big enough for them. Alright. Um, we'll say you find one without too much difficulty. Um, and I assume you take everyone through the tree in the graveyard. Yes. Cool. Yep. Once everybody's ready, we'll go and zoop through. Cool. Um, <clears throat> you arrive back at, uh, at the house with any real issue. Um, Itri seems really interested in the kinds of magic that you're using, but he does not remark upon it. It's genetic and unobtainable. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> When we get out of the the portal uh, and, like, we're all gathered basically on the lawn, Demure will, like, turn to the party and just be like, Well, I suppose I owe you an introduction. This is my little brother, Itri. Cool. 
Cool. Uh, he kind of sighs at the tone of your voice, <laughs> but uh, gives you all a slight nod and says, um, actually, uh, since you are not there, I actually already introduced myself to your companion. Just without that last little bit. <laughs> I I have had the I haven't had the chance to catch your name yet. Nice to meet you. Uh, Hawk will let you remove his mask and bow. Hawk. Hawk also does an appropriate bow for a royal. Mm-hmm. I'll kill your grace at your service. Uh, Levy. Go on. Uh, Levy will do a little the world's worst curtsy with her with her flowy pant legs uh, and go um, Limnara Ah, uh, please that, that is um it is not necessary to to bow or curtsy or anything uh, it, uh, we have fought together so um and he kind of pauses and looks around uh, do you live in a graveyard? <laughs> it's a... No, no, but the house is this way. <laughs> it's a convenient tree for the spell you just witnessed. Yeah, we inherited it with the house. Oh, uh, Levy looks visibly um, relieved. <laughs> Itri's just like, we don't need all of that. <clears throat> um... He seems uh, kind of relieved that you guys don't live in a graveyard. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Um, but uh, who leads the way back to the house? Actually, no probably Demir. Right. I think like after like after everyone is like doing their little curtsy and he trees like you don't have to do that and just being charming and wonderful and everyone loves him and Demir is just starting to march back towards the house <laughs> competition <laughs> Levy is also trying to escape the social situation so she's following Demir behind pretty close I'm not gonna know why alright Tobias uh, despite knowing that Demir is pissed about seeing E-Tree. He is also intrigued and amused. And so he'll probably be idly talking with E-Tree on the way back. Like, you might be asking him about the uh, vision that he summoned a bit more and stuff. Alright. Um, he is more interested in talking about the uh, magical aspects of the spell. Um, than... Yeah, Tobias is interested to hear it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, he explains that it is a uh, see, it's a conjuration spell um, and that he uses the the gem you saw earlier this evening to, as a component um, and that the uh, the jinn is pulled temporarily from the uh, elemental plane of air and is returned upon either his defeat or the magic of the spell runs out and like you he's he's willing to talk to you about this but he also seems very He's very much like he's keeping an eye on Demir. Um, when you guys arrive at the house, uh, what room do you guys go to? What time is it also? It's probably about um, 1 a.m., 1.30 Kids are both asleep. Sniv is being a gremlin. 
Sniv is in the basement probably. in the alchemy room. <laughs> probably the living room, the parlor, which the fireplace and all that. Dining room right. has more chairs. Parlor has plenty of places to sit, as does the den. But the parlor ha is the one with the fireplace. We should head to the den then, um, so that there's enough room for people and also keep it contained. Alrighty. Uh, we can show Etri our Pepe Silvia wall with all of our time shenanigans and murder theories. That's in the library. <laughs> um, but you arrive in the den, and Esme is actually just sitting on one of the couches. And it sure looks startled. But seeing that none of you guys are really bothered by her existence kind of relaxes the fraction, but is keeping an eye on her. Uh, oh, I've never seen a household ghost. <laughs> Tobias, when they enter... Uh gestures to or waves hello to <laughs> Esme and says hello Esme and then uh tells to uh Eitri um she originally lived here before us and now uh she helps watch over the place she's a very nice woman uh well uh who am I to judge uh kind of give Esme short bow um Madam, uh, thank you for allowing us into your home. And Esme kind of nods and then stands and drifts through a wall and disappears. Falk uh, throws <clears throat> some of the ample firewood into the fireplace and just magics it going. All right. Demir is digging out the brandy that she knows we probably put somewhere around here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a, a, a small liquor cabinet to the side. Yep. <clears throat> She's digging it out. <laughs> and she is pouring a glass and then looking at the bottle and then just swinging from the bottle. <laughs> Lish kind of looks at her and is like, Demir, please. <laughs> is that the name that you are going by these days? Yes. Demir. We should keep our heads about us. You said mom was missing. Uh, yes. Um, when? From my perspective, uh, about a, a year and a half. Um, As I said, uh, Amira is still on her honeymoon with uh, Lord Ray. Uh, ba is... He, he is younger and does not recognize me. And most of the servants of the palace seem to believe that you had just left for Neveli to get married. So they've even reached Marhaba. And the fact that it's localized time disturbances is additionally concerning. Well, according to my research, this is more of a global phenomenon. Well, no, it's uh, specific regions tend to be affected similarly. The fact that you're having multiple different times lines happening concurrently in the same location uh, is a little unnerving. Everyone just kind of looks at Falk as she's just dropping all these 
the long ass words and she's like but i read <laughs> as you could probably tell we've got a lot of experience and research of our own on what's happening across the plane i have been doing my own research um and trying to figure this out this, that is uh, in part why i have gone searching for Demir, you named yourself as, as Iron. Yes. What? But anyway, um, <laughs> I I have been trying to figure out if uh, her disappearance is in relation to everything else that has been going on. Well, I hate to tell you that you wasted your time. I have no more idea about what is going on than I'm sure you do. I'll just sort of like... I he can't side eye because he didn't have eyeballs, but <laughs> you get that vibe. Uh, I have my own theory. Also, should it be a roll deception at that? <laughs> I mean, she's that's got, a she's good. She's probably lie. good for it, but... I know, but still... That's a 19. What, did you roll a 2? <laughs> I rolled a 3. <laughs> <laughs> Spect. Well, I have my own theories on what is going on. Um, and I would appreciate any insight that you could give. I would be glad to provide my own perspective. It would admittedly be nice to compare notes. And we are looking for allies. Demir, you received a message? Yes. And it when, said what? When I was in the room, a voice reached out to me and called itself Grandmother and said that they had my mom. Are you speaking in common or Sylvan? Common. It really kind of leans forward at, at the Uh, wait, hold on, give me one second, because I believe, uh, the letter that Toby got from Baba Yaga, uh, there it is, found it, I just wanted to double check the thing. Damn, it wasn't signed. Never mind. Oh, wait, but he did look into Bobby Aga, so he would know that uh, she's sometimes a produced grandma, right? Sometimes. Uh, and Demir stated the uh, message in common. Mm hmm. Tobias's uh, eyes widen at that and says oh shit could you repeat the message to me again a voice calling itself grandmother said that she had my mother I received oh. a message as well did it say the same thing? No. And in fact, I know the source of this voice. Uh, this is a hag. Of course it is a hag. Leader of a coven up in the kind of southern coastal area of this area, of this continent, more north. 
um, it's called Nerefim. She is, she is less isolationist than many other hags in which she tends to toy. And she lives on the southern coast of this continent, you said. Well, at least that is where I last heard of her. So then unless she moved, then unless she moved house, she very intentionally went after the, the queen. Well, what what was the message about? It was... Similar, I suppose, to what Demi received. That she was inviting us to go visit. And if not, then perhaps something may happen to their respected guests. And with the time bubbles going on, who knows what kind of ripple that might have to her progeny. Sounds like our hands are fairly well tied. As are ours. What would a hag want with my mom? You. Do you know anything ab about about this? I, I did not realize that my mother had ever been to this continent up beyond the politics. There's plenty of ways to step through to other places, <clears throat> as you just witnessed. There's a simple enough thing to open up a tree. Or she could have taken and advantage perhaps. of the fucky wucky happening. Certainly. She also likes to play with mortal lives. She is of a more powerful breed of hag. I think Baba Yaga. Delightful. Narafine exactly and Baba what Yaga are two different entities. I yes. Um, but of a similar class, yeah. Not somebody that I would enjoy interacting or trifling with, but it seems that she would like to trifle with us. We can try scrying, we could try negotiating with her. We don't even know what she wants yet. Sounds like she wants some fun. She wants one of us. And Zamira is going to look over at each tree. Confess that they that do not know much about Hag. We have the occasional blood hag back in the Mahaba, but they are not terribly com common. Is this sort of thing something you have dealt with before? To varying degrees of success. <laughs> Zamir is going to look at the rest of the party. <laughs> we Excuse you, I have done nothing. <laughs> I don't care. Exactly, to That's varying good. degrees of success. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> hey, Valk's happy with her deal. What are you guys on about? Ewan doesn't make eye contact with anyone, but he is. Are you kidding me? Valk made a stupid fucking deal. And <laughs> keeps shoving it onto Tobias as his, like, 
Oh, I did it for you. I did it for you. I did it for you. Even though he's repeatedly told her, no, you did not. I did it for Demir, too. <laughs> oh, my um, God. These goobers. Again, she just got rid of some memory she didn't want. All, everything's fine. She has disposable income. Anyways. Oh. Well, yeah, anyways. I do not wish to outstay my very cold welcome. Uh, so perhaps if you can tell me where to find... No. You stay here. I don't know what she wants with either of us, but if she wanted me, wouldn't she have reached out to me? Yes. Well, that was the threat. So, you stay here where you won't get yourself killed. I didn't realize that you cared so much. It would just be tragedy for them to lose you. <clears throat> they don't go around to care one way or another. Hmm. Well, and besides, Marhaba needs you. I think it's been yeah. a very long night. <laughs> and that perhaps we should all consider getting some rest. Before we say things that we all regret. Perhaps. Please. It isn't the worst idea, no. Do we have a spare bed anywhere? I'm willing to lend out mine. My room is quite tidy. We also have the fortress. Oh. Fortress I mean, that doesn't have beds. <laughs> yeah, but it is additional space. We'd still need to provide a cot, or at least a sleeping mat. Do we not have a guest room? I don't, don't remember if we do. I think oh, I co I mean, we did, but then Valk took it over. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Hawk, does, Hawk doesn't mind sleeping on the couch. You can quite literally sleep anywhere. Aaron also offers up his bed. So just put his Make him sleep in the storage room. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there not, like, places to potentially sleep in gosh the bottom floor with the oh. I know there's like couches and stuff in the den in the parlor right yeah but we should give him we should give him better than a couch don't you think <laughs> I, I mean it's what we've got right now it also, is. um also isn't Demir and Lish's bed specifically designed to be big enough for uh Toby and Levy to join them, so there's a room. I don't think you want to have E Tree in our weird pillow bed. I think that No, not you so, guys. No, uh, I, I think I think ones. Lars is suggesting <laughs> that Toby and Levy sleep with Lish and Demir and then Etri and his retinue can have Toby and Levy's room. It's not a bad if, idea. If Toby's okay with that, Levy is willing to give up her her spot at least. If Toby's okay with it. Tobias is willing to, so long as they don't touch any of his wood carvings. Yeah. Please, please just use the bed. <laughs> You'll have the utmost respect for your space, and I uh, appreciate you all graciously allowing me into your home. Uh, of course. And, but, and leave the, like a very, like, court politeness. <laughs> At this point, Aaron's gonna pipe up um, and say, "Oh, um, and in in case if you're still going to be at friends in the morning, uh, I guess just um, you know, forewarning. In addition to the ghost, uh, we've also got a couple the Peaceling kids, um, and a weird brain thing, and a dog, and a cat, and is that everything, guys?" Yes. Um, but don't be surprised if you see any of those running around. I I will talk with the kids. I'll talk to Sniv. 
I will let the kids know we, that we have guests. Oh. So that kid, that's been done, uh, really, uh, something. And yes, just make yourself at home, obviously, to the best of your ability. Uh, and, and she's actually going to also offer her bedroll in case, you know, there's any spillover off of the bed. Like, <laughs> just at least they can make a comfy spot on the floor somewhere if they don't want a couch. She's trying to play host. So Bryce right. will offer his bedroll as yeah. well. The, um, as the pattern dancers are discussing in my in my hobby among themselves, um, which the Levi can understand, for, uh, <laughs> taking watch while it's sleep. Fair enough. Uh, uh, the uh, if uh, just in case uh, you need it, uh, there is a there is a bathroom through this door. Though it is shared with the other room, uh, but you can lock the door from, but uh, both doors from both sides if you, if you need to. I once again appreciate your hospitality. Of course. And Libby's gonna go let the kids know that they have guests. <laughs> kids are asleep because it is a. Uh, like almost two in the morning by this point. Uh, well, she's waking them up <laughs> just to be like, we have surprise guests. So sorry. are you sure it's not a better? Are you sure it's not a better thing to say for the morning? No. Or write a note. <laughs> uh, we don't want to. We do not want a jump scare. <laughs> right. Well, the kids are both grouchy at being woken up, and they don't really care. <laughs> okay. I figured that would be the case. Uh, Levy will be like, sorry to wake you up. Get on back to sleep. All right. Aaron also calls something over, so something's just running around. Are there any other conversations that would like to be had this evening? Yes. Valk needs to track down Sniv. Sniv is in the basement setting things on fire. Excellent. He's got his Bunsen burner out. <laughs> hey, buddy. Don't come in. It's not done yet. Well, do you have a moment to talk? If he can stand the fumes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, make a constitution check. Twelve plus a fair amount. Okay, you're not poisoned. <laughs> Sixteen. All right, you're fine. I think I get a bonus against poison. Whatever. Um. So I step inside and like. So, uh, I actually I have. Two things I'd like to quickly discuss with you. You can see that he's listening, but he's very focused on what he's doing. Good. Uh, we have some guests in the house. Uh, staying in Toby and Levy's room. And <laughs> it I was a sick guest or guest guest? Guest guest. We're being nice to these people, so if you remain cordial with them, I'll buy you some more potion supplies. Deal. Excellent. Um, the second thing that I wanted to mention is of a more personal nature to myself. Uh, there was a bit of a brouhaha at the masquerade this evening and until my feathers grow in I need something to cover my face so I don't zap people and this veil wasn't particularly handy I was wondering if you, you could put your clever mind to a solution 
I can try. I appreciate that. If you need any help, just let me know. But I figured you were the man for the job. All right. I, sh I shake his little hand and leave him about his duty. All right. He gets a little bit of acid on your hands, but not enough to actually cause any hit point damage. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Any uh, final conversation? I think before Lish and everybody go to bed, Lish will say to Tobias and Levy and Demir as kind of like word for word as he can remember the message being. Um, and I will, I will share that with you. Three. All right. Yay, thank you. There you go. And Samir will try and do the same. So, yeah. <laughs> Y'all will be great. <laughs> All right, let me read this fucking essay. <laughs> you, you you wrote it, DM. We're just sharing it. <laughs> yeah, sense. You want me to just put the the messages into the the Discord? Uh, we're sharing it with these guys. For, yeah. I mean, the, the you guys got the gist of it. Yeah. The only real difference is there, like, there are some actual location information that's given, but um, that'll get brought up, I think. <laughs> All right. So with that, the night passes uneventfully. Um, what do you guys do? I was going to say, has a really hard time sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, it's very much like up, like falls asleep for a little bit and then is up again. Um, and so probably somewhere around like four or five in the morning just gives up and starts like putting on her robe and going downstairs um, into the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Stress cooking. <laughs> uh, when you head downstairs, um, you can see uh, Hitri is actually awake at this point and sitting on the stair. Um, and he is uh, sketching your uh, displacer beat. Uh, Layla is, is kind of just asleep in the, uh, in the foyer. Uh, she is doing like the little circle thing that cats do, except she has extra legs. Um, and uh, your brother is just making a frankly hyper realistic drawing of her. I'm in Layla. Am I correct in guessing that she is yours? Yes. Well, she seems very unique. She likes to play. If you have any string, she'll go for it like nobody's business. Well, I don't have to look among me. When she wakes up. Do you want anything for breakfast? I'm sure that anything you make will be wonderful. She just like you know. I'm sorry, what she what did he say? He said, um, I did miss you, you know.
I would have thought that Mama and Baba would have been relieved. Of course not. They may have hidden it, but they they care in their way. I'm sure they cared that they lost their example. They cared that they lost their daughter. Whatever that means. I cannot speak for them in what exactly they were thinking or going through their minds. But I, again, I miss you very much. I had hoped that once I became more skilled with magic, I would be able to convince them to be able to touch for you. But Well, it turns out I didn't have to ask their permission. You are very good with magic. I saw a little of what you did back there. Well, I still have a lot to learn, but uh, I had a good teacher and I am... Well... You know, I'm tired. Of course. And you seem rather talented in what you do as well. I saw that you grew wings briefly. Lots of things have changed. Really? Are you happy though? Think so. And that is what matters. And with that, he uh, tears the the picture of Layla out of uh, his, his book and hands the page to you. You keep it. It is yours. Thank you. You've... I am I am interested in learning more about these people you have found yourself with. Particularly your your partner that you were hugging earlier. My husband. Congratulations. Thank you. I wish that I could have gone to the wedding, but... You might still have the chance. We uh, never had a proper wedding. Anyway, I am going to... <laughs> and Zamir just, like, very awkwardly <laughs> steps around him. And, like... <laughs> A little bit going out of her way not make, to make sure that she doesn't like brush against him or touch him mm -hmm. um and then just like hurry down the stairs <laughs> very <All right>. awkwardly <laughs> okay well so what do you make for breakfast <sighs> um i think she is going to she'll make some um bread and she has uh she's going to make some um shakshuka which is uh eggs braised in like a tomato sauce and like spicy paste and all that stuff and um she's going to uh 
like it I, I think she probably like found some halloumi so she's going to make some some grilled halloumi and just kind of um make what is a more traditional marhabi breakfast um all right and yeah cool um everyone eventually comes to consciousness one way or another um and head, head down for for breakfast and the kids get ready for school um Lars, I see you gesturing. Did you have something in mind? Yeah, I, I just gotta have to weirdo at Eve, uh, e Eitri for a moment. Okay. So at some point in the morning, Valk does her thing where she just kind of creepily appears mm -hmm. while uh, he's doing whatever. At this point in the morning, uh, he is wearing kind of fine dark blue robes with a faint sort of golden iridescence look very expensive uh the sleeves and the hem of his robes they both have like a fine gold embroidery um which seems to be like a, a more mojave style and he um uh you can also see that uh strapped securely there by way of leather strap in a backpack as fashion is his spell book so he's kind of wearing it as a backpack <laughs> <laughs> like a nerd no, it's not full book holster it's just book backpack yeah <laughs> <laughs> um book back he, if you will let's say he's looking at um some of the the artwork you have up in the gallery So he's just looking at a painting and Valk just kind of mm -hmm. be, uh, besides him is just like uh, pay no heed to how your sister was behaving last night. Well, our eldest sister uh, would say that she's always been difficult. I would say she's spirited. Both from my experience would be accurate. She's certainly behaved that way <laughs> since I've known her. She just does not do well with people actually caring about her. That would make sense. But no, I am, I am not attentive. Good. I just wanted to make sure her mouth can run faster than we can keep up and <laughs> clean and, up after her a lot. So just making sure. And, you know, family is family. I wouldn't know, but What's I do my best. Anyway. Have a good morning. And then just... <laughs> 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 All right. Um, you all head to the, the dining room, I assume, for breakfast. Um, the pattern dancers are not sitting at the table with the rest of you. Uh, they are kind of standing off to the side, just making sure that there isn't any any bullshit going on they they're they are doing their job Valk just kind of goes you know you can do your job from the table right um and one of uh, them um uh Tifat, uh speaks up and says um it, it is our duty to uh, care first and foremost for the prince. Uh, we can eat after. The prince seemed to be able to take care of himself, and he is surrounded by people who would die to protect him. You can have breakfast with us. <laughs> well, persuasion with disadvantage.
That's not good. Uh, 13. If I didn't have disadvantage, it would have been a 20. They politely decline and say that they are going to wait. I was just like, eh, I tried. <laughs> and just, ah. Uh, Wouldn't say anything at breakfast, I wonder. Because <laughs> if not, I would like to steal that tree for a little bit. I mean, you certainly can. Demure is just kind of um, like when we're at the table, just like gets her, uh, like is just eating her breakfast kind of quietly to herself, like not really looking around at anything, like very lost in thought. Hawk, who doesn't eat, is sort of just observing. Uh, he is just metal out, by the way. He's clothed like a normal human being would be, and not like someone with a skin condition. <laughs> so his metallic hands are showing, and his head is on full display. Uh, after Etri seems to have finished eating his breakfast... Hawk will politely offer to him and uh, the pattern dancers after they get their share of food, perhaps, to discuss time findings in the library. Uh, I would appreciate that very much, actually. I have, um, as I mentioned earlier this morning, that I have uh, been putting together my own theories on everything that is going on. But it would be nice to have uh, another perspective. We've gotten quite a varied perspective ourselves. While I was out retraining, uh, seems that my friends found the source of the problem. It's it a perspective. We know what's going on. Just not how. I might, I dare say that I have quite a unique perspective myself. And I would love to hear that perspective. Of course. Uh, I suppose on the way to the library, uh, Puck will begin describing some errata of what they've seen. <laughs> he will mention specifically the time discrepancies in the unclaimed lands where they skipped a week in a crypt, the time bubble around Levy's hometown, and also just sort of offhandedly mention that he himself has been sent back in time after a failed attempt at, at remedying this before it could start. Um, that something of his kind is not due to appear for a while. It really doesn't look terribly surprised by that. It sounds as if Marhaba perhaps has it worse in terms of the time bubbles. Well, I cannot speak for all of Marhaba, but I can tell you that this issue is escalating. From my perspective, uh, the... Well, the fabric of reality is unraveling. If time were a tapestry with the future being the very top of uh, the tapestry and history being at the bottom. It is as if the tapestry is rolling in on itself while also being pulled apart uh, by the threads. That is the best way that I can describe it. Uh, from what I have noticed, uh, not only have certain things been seemingly plucked from history and uh, removed from the equation, I shall say. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, things from both the past and what seems to be the future are being brought in, uh, 
very abruptly into the present. And on top of that, if the other planes are additional tapestries that are in the same area as the single tapestry of the material plane, those are also having threads that are falling uh, onto our own plane. It seems you've done plenty of research indeed. We've observed much of the same. Planar discrepancies and all. That is the hope to figure it out. I have also encountered creatures that should not exist. Um, and he pulls out his sketchbook again and flips to a page. Um, let's see. Uh, let me just pull up a proper description of the... Uh, uh, you, you see a picture, uh, hyper-realistic, of sort of a, a large, like, ape-like, but insectoid creature. Um, and uh, it's it got, like, kind of a weird sort of fleshy texture to its and it looks like, but then its eyes, eye sockets are a little deep, but with like shiny uh, eyes peeking out of it. But, um, and if I get up this creature, um, it uh, seems to be some sort of, um, well, I, I refer to it as a dimensional shampener. Um, it, it seems to be taking advantage of uh, the the holes that are being wiped in the, the tapestry and uh, using that to hunt. Um, in addition, uh, he flips and uh, holds out a picture of a um, large cat-like, dragon-like being seeming to be made of stars. Um, and says, I have spotted this creature as well. Uh, I am not entirely sure what this one is. I have not able to, uh, to been able to get close enough to really determine its origin. Uh, Question for the party, real quick. What did anyone? I feel like I don't know for sure if Hawk was apprised of our own sightings of these creatures. I feel like he might have been. Yeah, there'd probably be a shittier drawing of the cat on the wall. Yeah. He's he, at the second one, Hawk's gonna be like, hold a moment. And he's gonna walk over, briefly remove our own rendition of it from the, 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 if we have it. The cat was at the final battle with Mistra that we were in. So yeah. Hawk didn't experience Hawk that vision, but No, oh yeah, Hawk wasn't there, was he? Ah oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> He, he was there in spirit, but he wasn't physically present for the vision. That was Zoda was hanging it outside. I think because the cat has been significant enough in a reoccurring theme that we would have brought it up to Hawk. Awesome, yeah. So he will take he will take our own thing. And be like, uh, we've we've also run into this. We also don't have much of an idea of what it is exactly. We do know, or at least have a strong suspicion that it is connected to Mishra. And with that, I should probably explain what we know of what is going on. You're familiar with the island, yes. Do you remember the Turning Spire, the Archmage, uh, let's say, governors of that country? Uh, I have not been there myself, as it is to my knowledge that the Turning Spire has gone quiet. Uh, but I do know that... Um, we are able to maintain trading relations with uh, Emirates and Harbor. Yes. So there's a good reason that the Archmages have been quiet, and it is that there has been a traitor within. A man by the name of Iderin, titled the Indefinite, gave in to, frankly, I 
cannot be too hard on him because I know where he's coming from. He, we have both lost people, and he has given in to the temptation to try and bring the person he lost back. He had the power to do it. As to our understanding, he has ripped open these holes in the tapestry to find her again. The other two Archmages tried to stop him and failed. She seems to be thinking on this and says, uh, My knowledge of things such as, as uh, uh, comedy is limited. I am more of a divination expert um, with an interest in illusions, but. Uh, to my understanding, if he was searching for this woman, he possibly would have been able to bring her to the present, and there would have been no need to continue to allow things to degrade as they have. Based on what you are describing, is it possible that he has created an entire other plane or location where he can be with this woman? Hmm. Now that you mention it, it does make sense, because a portal the likes of which not even the Archmages had seen before has been torn open inside the spire itself. Uh, a new location or demi-plane or plane itself uh, could be possible. And he kind of looks over at uh, your guys' drawing of the, the dragon cat and says, um, you have seems to be wearing armor of some kind. Whereas uh, his looks more like the one that Lish saw in his vision uh, that had belonged to Mistra. Hmm. Without the platinum on it. That may yet be significant. As for how, uh, as for how the indefinite gained this power, we do believe he has chained, if not killed, one of the gods, Mistra in particular. We've noticed places of her worship appearing and disappearing across island at the very least, and we've heard rumors and suspicions that perhaps that's happening on other continents as well. Well, I do not know much about Mistra, uh, as we tend to be more focused on the teachings of Joaquin back in Kesa. But uh, I have heard that temples have been disappearing um, in. Uh, in Ahwahi, uh, I have also heard that the temple to Mistra in Alperen has closed down. I, that could be related. Um, but uh, the fact that uh, there seems to be this Staring in the fabric of reality, as I mentioned, um, is allowing for extra planar beings to come on to our plane. That could explain why it was so easy for the, those devils and the cat, tiger, to, uh, uh, to appear in this plane. Um, it could also mean that the door would be open to 
to try to travel to other places as well to make it easier and to continue with this investigation. Perhaps that's something we'll have to do. We certainly, ironically, seem to have a time limit. So... And that is the way of arcane decay. Mm -hmm. uh, but perhaps if you can find a way to get to uh, the upper plane to investigate, you say Mistra, uh, to find her plane or her home. Uh, I do not know much about her religion, as I said, so I cannot speak to the specific. Do I. <laughs> but perhaps you would be able to find some information there. It's a good idea. Very good idea. Have you been in contact with any of the wizards here, by the way? We're friends with Aldrich Idis, one of the professors at the Royus Academy. And I think we've also befriended a student, though I've yet to meet her. I did briefly pass through um, Royus to do some investigation and see what information they had. Uh, uh, Perhaps a more thorough collaboration might be in order. I did order. spend some time at the library. Yes, well, they're, where they're working with us and we're working with them to get to the bottom of this as well, perhaps fix it, undo it. Your help would be greatly appreciated. As I said last night, we are in search of allies. Though... Well, I, I, I would be glad to help. Uh, as, as I mentioned, Previously, my goal for coming to this continent, uh, to Neveli specifically, was to search for my sister to see if her disappearance was in in any way related to this. <laughs> uh, but um, she said that it was not that there was something else going on, even though she looked the same as she did uh, seven years ago, other than the fact that her hair is shorter and she has a tattoo on her arm. But, uh, I suppose that's her story to tell when she's ready. I, yeah, I, I would not ask you to divulge her secrets. I know that she can try to hold on to them. Yes. I'll freely admit that I accused her of being selfish once, but I do believe that she does care about us, and I think she cares about her freedom. I think that the two things can coexist, both a selfishness and a, a desire for others. After all, many people do have some sort of selfishness if it comes to their own happiness and survival. Far be it for me to apologize for her, but I am sorry that your reunion went so sourly. Well, I honestly don't know what I expected, to be honest. Uh, I mentioned to your uh, companion, Valkyria, earlier uh, that she is rather spirited and always has been. Hmm. I just merely did not expect her to grow wings and then flee the woods. Yeah, she, she's been through quite the journey herself, as I understand. Well, I look forward to hearing from her about it. May I ask what your home life was like? Back at the palace. Uh, before all this is happening, or...? Yes, before. When you normal. Ah, uh, well... Ah, uh, there was a um, lot of pressure. On, on all three of us. Um, I, I am expected to eventually leave Mahaba. Um, but, uh, so I have been tutored in the arts, in politics, the uh, various things that um, noble education would require. Um, 
but I had begged for years for our mother to allow me to be able to study something a little more interesting from my perspective. Um, and so I was given a tutor, um, a, a preceptor, Asia um, and uh, he taught me um, taught me magic. And honestly, this these lessons started all around the same time that um, my my sister Demia, as you know her apparently, uh, went went missing. So. Um, Honestly, my, my, study, my study with magic and her disappearance sort of became entwined for me. As I was about to guess, I've also been through uh, magical tutoring quite recently. Not of the same nature, of course, but it's something unique. Something I'm very happy with. Well, I may it continue to bring you happiness. Likewise for you. I don't think I need to tell you this, but um, your sister's memories of home aren't all pleasant. No, I would not imagine so. As I said, there was a lot of pressure put on all three of us to be the perfect representatives of the royal family, and I imagine it was more difficult for her, given that uh, she, well, had expectations to be a princess. And I mean, the, the history of our country is divided by gender in a lot of ways. Um, but uh, it, the fact is that neither she nor uh, our sister Amira could really expect to inherit anything. The fact that uh, I was the youngest and therefore the the baby for my parents um, try to be kind to her if you can. I have tried my best to do that, yes. I can. Ah, uh, believe me, we have had our own series of trials and tribulations with her. I, I will readily admit that, but we do all care for her all the same, me included. But I am, I am glad that she has found people to, to care for her as she, as she is, rather than who she is expected to be. I'm glad that you find happiness in that as well. For what it's worth, I think you'll make a fine king when the day comes. Perhaps. It's easy to say perhaps. I know self-doubt myself. I think everyone does. A little bit of reassurance and self-belief goes a long way, don't you think? I would agree with that. Do you have any other questions uh, back on topic with our own time findings and whatnot? You could probably like seem there as they sort of like bevel and babble because you've gotten a lot of information from us already. Hawk does intend to share it with the party when the time comes. I will have to think about this and compare to my own notes. Of course, I'll have to note down what we've learned from you as well. It's very helpful. Are there any other conversations I'd like to be had this morning? Uh, at some point, Aaron, Aaron will ask to, uh, to get, I don't know, to get a moment alone. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to yell into your microphone because whatever your setup is, it's not working for me today. I'm sorry. Um, at some point, um, Aaron's going to ask to take a moment alone with you three. 
um, you know, from the group. Um, and then, you know, turn, turn over to the pattern dancers and uh, do a little like, I will like, uh, you know, like not over like, yeah, yeah. And I know, uh, I know one of you is going to come too. All right. You, you pull it, it, it tree aside. Um, and um, I'll say, sorry, not, um, uh, not to get you off topic, um, but did, did you do those drawings that you showed us? Um, I, I did, uh, yes. Oh, goodness me. Um, well, um, I hope, um, not an author, but I'm, I'm a little bit of an artist myself. Um, and I would, I would love, uh, any, if you might have on that, I mean, I'm, he's going to shuffle around in his, in his past and eventually, uh, Actually, ooh, wait. I have each real loan, which means I don't need to describe this to the group. Um, <laughs> and eventually he's going to pull out the portrait he's made of Demir um, and say, uh, I'm, you know, I, I try, but I'm, I'm nowhere near your level. Uh, this is uh, quite lovely. I could give you a few pointers. If you are interested, uh, I have been trained in uh, different forms of art since I was young. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that'll explain it. I, I only really had the freedom to pick this up in the last, oh God, I don't know, few months. Um, yeah, and then Aaron will sit down and, you know, just recommendably listen to anything he has to, to show him. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I mean, he's able to, to talk to you a little bit about uh, like some pointers for, for realism and all that fun stuff. Oh, my son is right. Oh, my God. It's a baby. It's a baby. Um. <laughs> I mean, Tamir has stuff this morning, but, um, <laughs> if anyone else has anything, probably first. Lish is probably just kind of lingering around Demir, just making sure she doesn't fucking run away. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> In the nicest, most casual way <laughs> of watching her bake and cleaning up and stuff. Yeah, and uh, she definitely, like, there's a lot of, like, kind of, there's more muscle memory, um, with her brother and the pan pattern dancers around um so like you know normally she would start like bussing the table and stuff like that and this time she just kind of pushes her plate aside and um like goes into the kitchen and is just kind of um doing like not even like not doing a ton of cleanup but um like putting things away or putting them in the sink and that type of stuff and just like very like in her own head um but like after like after she's kind of run out of tasks for her hands to do just kind of turns and looks at lish and just like what do we do What do you mean? What does a hag want with me and my mother? My brother. I frankly have no idea other than fucking with us. Does she have cause to fuck with you? 
I don't know, DM. I don't think so. <laughs> not not anything. No, she's not really associated with any of the seasonal courts. She's one of the hags that tends to like, she and her coven, I should say, like to kind of stick to the material plane and so mm-hmm. chaos. Like, whereas I had described a hag before as um, have technically having an evil alignment because they're looking out for themselves, she mm-hmm. actually likes to kind of fuck with people. Yeah, I think that perhaps we have been noticed in our activities and someone would like a slice of that pie. <laughs> dip the finger of chaos into things as if we needed more of that. As if we needed more of that. I don't know what to do. What are you debating? How involved I'll be. The trouble with hags is that their solutions are not always as simple and straightforward as just killing. That is my worry. I can't let her take him. He has no idea what he's getting himself into if he goes after her. No. It's similar to Tobias's... Get your ass! (laughs) He jumped up on the table! (laughs) Okay, sorry. You up to shenanigans? Up to shenanigans. (laughs) <laughs> it is similar to Tobias dabbling with the Baba Yaga. I don't know if I would feel comfortable with him running to face her alone without somebody that knows fey dealings. No. No, E3 e- e- shouldn't be. I mean, this is my mess. This is about your mess as it is anybody's mess. It's not your fault. I'm not so sure. In what way is it your fault? I don't know yet, but I'm sure it is. (laughs) I'm sure you'll come up with some reason to self-flagellate yourself, my darling. But until that time happens, I will assure you very much that if it wasn't you the hag was fucking with, it would be somebody else. And Lord knows we just happen to be at the right place at the right time of all this shenanigans with time I think we are just interesting enough to have caught her eye perhaps she wants something I don't know I think perhaps we should scry her try and talk to her I think maybe I should be the one to do it if you're willing to let me use your glow <laughs> Only if you promise to give it back after the scry. I will give it back to you, my dear. <laughs> when? You know how precious it is to you. <laughs> the question, my dear, is when? When would you like it back? After you finish talking with the hag. Fair enough. <laughs> Demir will reluctantly handed over. <laughs> okay. Well, she'll start attuning to it. 
All right. Um, my crystal ball of telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> All according to Kate. <laughs> um, all right, you uh, attune to it, um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you can you can try to describe it now if you want. Uh, I think I need to gather my thoughts on this a little bit more. <laughs> um, anybody else got something that they want to do in the meantime? <laughs> I think I could fill eight minutes and then we could save the scrying for next session. I would appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> So, did Sniv finish his potion and start on side project, or nah? He is experimenting with the potion still. Okay. Does he need to do any tests to see what is actually an effective blockage material, or nah? No, he just rolled a nat 20. So he, Holy shit! He thinks he can figure it out on his own. So he's just gonna be like, oh, here's your McFucking protector thing that I've made that I drained immediately. <laughs> I just invented sunglasses. Actually, I could totally see him, like, killing a big bug, stealing the eye covers, and creating a mount as, like, the first draft of it. Uh, I mean, he does explain that he will have to probably spend some time experimenting on his own for this project. Um, so that uh, so that he can get the materials he needs um, without disrupting whatever it is you people are doing. Uh, whatever thing you want to drag him along to. Um, but he's got some ideas. Okay, I'll let him do what he needs to do. Demir is going to, um, like, while she, like, when she was doing all the breakfast stuff, she had um, chopped up some ginger and had candied it. And it was just cooling over um, to the side. And so she's going to take the, the candy ginger and wrap it up in a little cloth and going to go find where each tree is and throw it at the back of his head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, behavior. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Yeah, no, he does not dodge. <laughs> I imagine he's uh, still in the library with Hawk, right? Yeah. I, I'll say that you're in the, the library, you walk up and just chuck it at the back of the head. Um, he like <laughs> kind of curses in my hobby. Um, <laughs> then bends down to pick it up and like makes a motion like he's going to throw it back at you, but then sees what it actually is and opens it up and, uh, and take, takes a piece and he thanks you like them uh are you speaking in common marhabi marhabi um he hold on the cats are fucking with the door hey <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway uh he uh he nods and says um i i did always have a soft spot for these ones mm. It's all yours. I appreciate it. Um, have you found any interesting new recipes uh, on your travels? A few. You want to try Lutfisk? That sounds interesting. <laughs> I'll see I forget. what I can do. 
Oh, wait, it's not Wonohago, so I can't be like, man, I'm glad I don't have a mouth for this one. <laughs> All right. Um, and so why don't we call session there for the day? Yeah. Seems like a good resting point. Mm-hmm. Demir is going to try and figure out how to make look best. <laughs> All right. Good boy. She has a recipe for it. <laughs> Where the <laughs> Well, is she gonna bury it in the graveyard and make your your graveyard lutefisk? Yes. <laughs> Get all the grave juices in there. Uh, uh-huh. If we're adding mysterious juices, I'm sure Sniv could give you whatever he's currently brewing. Formaldehyde is a seasoning. It is dwarves. <laughs> I mean, you already dip the damn thing in lye. You don't need to do anything more than that. <laughs> anyway... Thanks for playing, guys. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun as always. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> you just fall out. I'm screaming, crying, throwing up. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> I'm glad the siblings are already warming up to each other. I had a feeling this is going to be a lot more difficult. <laughs> Sibling dynamic, man. Oh, yeah. The problem okay. is the other sibling. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to her, I'm sure. Let's see. Her eight uh, years, her honeymoon. Well, Run into her in the playing, winter. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome as always. Ooh. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.